Welcome back to Meshman Studio. So, we're gonna have a new series here, and it's gonna be VFX Fundamentals. And today, it's gonna be about HDR capture and how I go about to capture my HDR. So, first off, we need some ingredients. So we have a, a camera, that's good to have. So this one is a Promote. It's an HDR remote control. So if I, I can control how, how many brackets I want, the exposure increments and so on. I use this one. So this one is a uh, like a color checker. So it's good to have when um, you're gonna do white balance and, and those things onto your images. And uh, this one, this one is a uh, nodal ninja. So yeah, you, you mount it together. And what it does, um, it makes you, uh, by using this screw here, it makes you uh, be able to uh, have a certain amount of degrees between each exposure. So I'm gonna show this. Um, I can just mount it here on my tripod. And we can adjust with these uh, levers here, with, with these knobs here to adjust so it's in level. And then you mount, mount it on my Canon 5D Mark III here. So this one is full frame lens and it goes from 8 to 15 millimeter. And that's good because I can be quick. I can go 8 uh, millimeter. And that's gonna enable me to just to take a few pictures. If I take it to 15 millimeter, then I get a high resolution but on the expense of more exposure. It's gonna take me a bit longer to take my uh, exposures because I need more increments of this. So like uh, 60 degrees or something between each. So what you do, you mount this one. So this is a nodal ninja. So it has an ex and special ring here on my eight to 50 millimeter lens that's made for this one, specifically for this uh, um, nodal ninja. Uh, panorama rig. So what I do here, for example, so it's already calibrated, you need to uh, get the correct distance, but that's kind of easy because it's almost on to the nodal point um, in this rig. So the nodal point is the optical center where you don't get any parallax onto your images. So uh, you set this, set my uh, 50 millimeter for example, and I set 60 degrees here, and that's gonna give me enough overlap between each HDR to uh, be able to cap. So imagine that I'm gonna take this studio here, I actually did the other day on, um, on the studio here. So yeah, uh, I hooked this up, so um, I set the number of exposures, what uh, my middle exposure is, 60 of a second, two EVs and seven exposures. And I hit the start button, I need to turn this on. So we're gonna cycle through now and take seven HDRs with two exposures between each step. So it's gonna be slightly longer each time. And then it gives me a beep. And then I just rotate this to this press again. Let's see. So here we can see. So now it's you can see it cycles through between each exposure here consecutively making it from uh, and that is gonna be super exposed. That's kind of the basics how you capture the HDR, uh, but that's just half of the equation. So now you really need to take this into the computer and process all of the images. So I get a fair bunch of images on, a, on the highest resolution. So the 50 millimeter gives me around almost 16K, it's it's slightly below five, 15 point something thousand pixels wide. And if I would turn this to an eight millimeter, it would be around 8K. So yeah, 
So 15, uh, so even if you would have another rig with even longer lens, you would obviously get even higher resolution on your HDR. So let's take this now into the processing part and see how I go about to stitch all of this together. So I'm gonna use Photoshop just for the basic processing and then take this into another program called Photomatix and that's kind of my go to when I do actually combine the HDRs into raw uh, uh, combined HDRs and then I use and now um, this continued software called Auto Panagiga. It's it's a shame they, they close shop. So I, I guess um, if you're gonna buy the program, similar program today, it's gonna be PT GUI, I think. Make uh, the same. I haven't checked them out recently. But yeah, PT GUI should be able to stitch HDRs, but I have Auto Panagiga, the last uh, program that they released before they actually closed so yeah let's take this in now into the actual uh, processing stage okay so here in photoshop bridge here so these are the the pictures i uh, i took here so you can see there's there's uh, all the exposures here in in a row here there's a lot of them so uh, around uh, yeah 60 degrees between each so we can see here the, the light here from from the most underexposed here going up to, to there and then the next one and so forth and I think I took one yeah so one straight down as well one one up in the so I usually go like in two rows um, straight on and then maybe one or two straight up and one also or two straight down. So you just angle it. Here we see the straight down here. It's really hard to not be in the picture yourself. Ideally you want to also then move the this the straight down, move a, the tripod off center. There's a mechanism so you can actually swivel this uh, out like 90 degrees so you can actually get the a, a kind of a cleanish straight down. So you, you want to place it essentially where that tripod is there so you can get a clean one there as well. Okay so let's actually now do something here. So I want to have this one Let's take that one and select a lot of them. Open in camera raw. So I just want to now set the white balance here. So I just set it on, where is it? This one first, the white there. And then let's zoom in here. Let's see here, we can see some chromatic aberration here from my lens maybe. Somewhere, yeah, you can see there's like a purple line here. If I go now here to my um, the lens correction here and say remove chromatic aberration, we'll see. Maybe you can see it, but yeah, it's a like the purple line goes away there. So we want to do that. Let's zoom back here, and then. Uh, if I select this one and all of them in a row here and say uh, um, sync settings so I want to sync white balance and chromatic aberration and hit OK so that's gonna apply all of the, these settings onto all of the images here in a row and then uh, you can sit, uh, hit this the save images you browse to a location, a folder, so you're gonna save this out in my case as TIFF files. So I've already done that and um, then I just want to run this, all of these images that I've saved out through this other program called uh, Photomatics. That's kind of a batch conversion tool that I use. You could probably do it in um, Photoshop as well but yeah um, you can uh, 
easier, more like take a whole folder and run it out through these photomatics. So let's jump over to photomatics now and see how that is. Yeah, so here we can see here batch bracketed photos. And um, so, yeah, so I select my folder here. So, yeah, I saved them out from Photoshop. So I go to that folder now. So HDR stitch, so there's where I save them. So here we can now see we have, I have seven images that I wanna batch together and uh, create a HDR. I don't align them. And then point to a directory where I'm gonna save the HDR out to. So then I'm gonna take them into my other program called auto pana giga that's now been discontinued unfortunately so yeah there's the hr folder and then i just uh, select my resolution or oh, my uh, format so jpeg and radiance hdr there and start to stitch and uh, yeah then i just go and make myself a coffee and uh, come back 15 20 minutes for an hdr when it once it's patched them all together into that folder so yeah Let's jump into uh, panel stitch procedure now. Yeah, so now we're here, we in Autopanel Giga, so we first load the images here that I previously exported from uh, Photomatics. So yeah, um, and then we need to analyze this, but first we need to actually set um, some parameters for the HDR. So, Remember, I used a um, 15 millimeter lens, so that's something the EXIF data is stripped off when I uh, make HDR, so it doesn't recognize the images. So therefore, there is a setting I can tell it what um, camera I used and also what type of lens. So first off, here is some basic settings. I generally don't mess with this. Um, and uh, then uh, we we'll go here and look at the information here so we have we see here we have 50 millimeter and my crop factor is one so it's a full frame lens so that, yeah and now i analyze the the stitch here and after a while we should have a uh, yeah so now we see here now it's recognized the image and it's 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 pretty dark because my HDRs were kind of dark, so um, I have to just preview for the preview purpose. I just increase the gamma there. It, it's gonna clip like hell in the viewport, but that's the HDR will still be floating point. This is just for preview, so um, yeah, I could I guess uh, stitch the JPEGs and just swap them out. Um, so yeah, I'm just placing. Uh, how I want it to uh, look like in the final result. And then uh, I need to uh, export this out. So yeah, just uh, hit OK and then the, go to the batch process. And that's gonna take a long time or maybe half an hour or so for a, a really big one. But yeah, so EXR is the format. In my case here, I first set to uh, export out to uh, 16k so then go to exr that's important compression i save it to my desktop give it a name and then hit batch render and then uh, go for another cup of coffee that's it for today and uh, if you want to support my channel consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything yeah see you on the channel bye bye